Okay, hello everyone. Um, my name is John Davidge. I'm an OpenStack Neutron developer at Rackspace. Uh, and this is going to be a nice, simple talk about a nice, simple feature that's uh, new for Mitaka. <coughs> so, uh, the problem uh, that has been in multiple OpenStack projects for a long time is that uh, when an admin or anyone else deletes a tenant or a project in Keystone, you end up with all of these dead resources uh, distributed among all the different services of OpenStack, uh, which are associated to a tenant that no longer exists. And it's then the cloud admin's job to seek out and destroy all these resources by whatever means they like. Um, this is a complex and time-consuming process, and no one likes doing it. Um, so there are some existing solutions. There's, in fact, an OpenStack project called OS Purge, which is designed to do exactly this. Uh, so it's a standalone tool that's a link to the GitHub there. Um, uh, and in the Neutron case, it supports deleting networks, routers, security groups, and floating IPs. Uh, so essentially, you would download this tool. Um, you would tell it to OS purge uh, a given tenant ID. And it will communicate with all the different OpenStack uh, services and figure out what needs to be deleted and, and take care of the deletion for you. Um, but in Tokyo, and many times before that, uh, operators have asked us, so f from the Neutron perspective at least, operators have said, hey, you know, we use OS Purge, we use similar tools, we have our own tooling for doing this, but we would love the, the Neutron Python client to be able to just do this natively for us. Um, so that's what we've done in the, in the Metaka cycle. Uh, so we have a new command in the Python Neutron client called Neutron Purge, um, and this is how you use it. So uh, you simply use Neutron Purge, and you provide a tenant ID. Uh, if you're an admin, you can provide the tenant ID of any tenant that you have control over. Uh, and in fact, if you yourself are a tenant, you can provide your own tenant ID if for some reason you decide you want to kill all the resources that you own. Um, it will uh, delete all of the resources in the correct order. It communicates with Neutron via the API. So this isn't built directly into the Neutron service itself. This is all client side. Um, you get a nice live percentage feedback that updates on the CLI as the command is executing. Um, if you only have a couple of dozen uh, resources, it, uh, you know, it, it could take seconds. If you have hundreds or thousands of resources, it could take minutes. So you, know, you want to know it hasn't hung. Uh, and then when it completes, you get a quick little report that says, hey, I, I've deleted this, I've deleted that, and I couldn't delete these things. Um, so here's an example of what that looks like. So you as the cloud admin, you say Neutron Purge, you provide the tenant ID, uh, and the first thing you get is this purging resources, and it's probably not going to instantly say 100% complete unless they only have a very small number of resources, but that number will update every, I believe, every second or every half second uh, as the process completes. And then when it's done, you get these two lines of information. So it'll say, I've deleted one security group, two ports, one router, one floating IP, two networks. Um, and then sometimes it will also say the following resources could not be deleted. And it will list all of the resources that belong to that tenant, which couldn't be deleted for one reason or another. So uh, in this example, it says it can't delete a network. Um, a reason for that could be in the case of a shared network. If you have a network that's shared between two tenants, uh, and it's still in use by another tenant, uh, then it's not going to go ahead and delete that network because that's going to cause problems for the other tenants in your, uh, in your environment. So right now, in the first release, uh, which is in uh, Mitaka, we support all of these resources, networks, subnets, ports, routers, router interfaces, security groups, and floating IPs. Uh, so we're at and above feature parity with OS Purge. Um, and the framework is designed to be incredibly easy to add more in the future. Um, it's actually simply the case of uh, putting the correct keyword into, uh, into a list in the source code, and it goes ahead and does that as well. Uh, and that's it. That's, that's the feature. That's what it does. Um, I'm happy to take any questions in the room if there are any. We've got lots of time left. Yes? So if, if you've got uh, ports tied to VMs, it still releases those? It pulls them off the VM? Uh, or does a VM tie it up? Uh, so the VM would tie it up, yeah. OK, so that would be a not That would be in the, that would be a, a yeah. So the question was, uh, if, if there's a, a, a port that is still in use by a, a virtual machine, uh, will that be deleted? And the answer is no. You would, it would show up in the list of, I could not delete this resource. Yes? Uh, so this, the feedback at the end. So you'd actually see the UID 
the um, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. So the question is, uh, could this feedback at the end be more verbose? Could you provide, say, the name of the resource or the ID of the resource? Uh, the answer is yes, we could do that. Uh, all that information is available to the uh, to the process that's doing this on the Python Neutron client. F in the case of this first iteration, uh, I decided not to because you know the output could be absolutely enormous. Uh, but if people say that uh, they want that, then we can totally look into that. If you pass in dash dash debug, you'll see a lot of that anyway, won't you? Um, in this case, so the the question was uh, if you if you add dash dash debug, will you see that? Um, good question. Uh, possibly. I haven't tried it myself, but uh, possibly, yeah. Yes? Do you have any historical context as to when, um, or when you deleted a tenant, why it didn't remove resources to begin with? Uh, so, sorry, can you repeat the question? Yeah, so when you remove a tenant, right, uh -huh. um, I feel like logically, I feel like it should remove everything underneath that. Um, all the resources associated with it, so why uh -huh. was that done in the first place? So uh, the question is, uh, when you delete a tenant, shouldn't it just shouldn't all of this happen automatically? Essentially, um, the answer is yes. I would love for that to be the case. Um, there have been multiple. In fact, there was an attempt in Neutron um, a while back to have this process essentially listen onto the message queue um, and detect when a tenant was deleted, and then check if it had any resources, and essentially do this process completely hands off. Um, that ended up to be a, you know, a big, big job. Um, so eventually, yes, we would like to move towards automating it um, for the sake of getting something out the door as quickly as possible and get it in the hands of our operators. In this case, it's a, you know, it's a thing you have to kick off yourself. But hopefully, this is still going to be 100% more useful than what currently exists, which is nothing. Um, so yeah, absolutely. In the future, automation is the way to go. Any other questions? Yes? So this tool is really targeted as cleaning up after a tenant, let's say. Do you have any future plans to perhaps um, extend it? So there's these cases where you have wireframe resources, say the DHCP agent, you have leftover namespaces. Mm -hmm. Do you ever see the need to extend this to perhaps only delete those orphaned objects? Or is this strictly just for cleaning up after a tenant? So the question is, um, is there is there are there future plans to make it so that this could be used to delete orphaned resources? So how would you define an orphaned resource? How would you differentiate a resource so from let's from say these? You're using the DHCP agent mm -hmm. with a network. Let's say you try to delete your network and your subnet. Something happens during that deletion process, and your namespace, let's say on the DHCP agent side, doesn't get cleaned up. So now you have an agent a namespace with no network and neutron, and that namespace is just going to sit in there. Okay, so the question, so I, I guess what you're saying is, so the question is, if say you're deleting a, a, a network and something goes wrong, the network is deleted, but say the DHCP agents associated with that mo network are not. Correct. So you'd like a command that would say neutron, I don't know, whatever, neutron purge, and then instead of a tenant ID, you give it a network ID, yeah, and it deletes all the resources. So that's, in, that's an interesting question. Um, yeah, absolutely. That's, yeah, we'll talk about that later. Great. Anything else? No? OK. Well, that's it. Uh, thank you very much. You can reach out to me on, on all of these places if you have any further questions. And great. Thank you.